Ordinary Pez dispensers are way too slow, so I decided to speed things up. Exactly how fast? Well, that's what I aim to find out. Now you guys remember the condiment cannon, right? Well, I need a sidearm for it, and it needs to be smaller, faster, and more explosive. Plus, it also has to solve a major problem I'll soon be facing. To make all that happen though, I need a new type of ammunition, and as the leading expert in food-based combat, it's my job to find something both dangerous and delicious. See, the main problem with the jelly packets is they start tumbling in the air shortly after leaving the barrel, which dramatically increases drag and reduces their effective range. And on top of that, these jelly packets aren't even manufactured to the same tolerances as other modern ammunitions, which means their dimensions can vary wildly between batches. As a result, they can sometimes get jammed. However, after taking a stroll through the candy aisle one day, I think I found the perfect solution to both of these problems. Behold the humble Pfeffermitz, which is peppermint in German, but more importantly, it's also the full government name of everyone's favorite dispenser-based treat. The Pez. Not only are these the perfect size and shape for hurling across the room, but they're also literally designed to fit inside a magazine, since after all, that is how you're supposed to eat them. To actually test this, I need to build a prototype candy launcher, and for that, I'm going back to the brushless drone motors from the original condiment cannon prototype. They didn't quite have the torque needed to launch the heavy jelly packets, but for these small, lightweight pieces of candy, they should be perfect. Now, I wanna maintain the same overall design from the condiment cannon, so I'm using these motors to spin a set of flywheels that will hopefully grab the candy and fling it out the front. And while the finished product will have removable magazines, I wanna start with just one piece of candy at a time to see if this idea even works. It, of course, absolutely did not work on the first try, and instead, the wheels decided to launch out chunks of the rubber tread I had made instead of the candy. So I swapped out the rubber for some 3D printed treads using an eye-wateringly expensive TPU filament and tried again. Naturally, this introduced a completely new issue, where instead of going flying, the candy would just get spat back out into my hands, or even worse, just chattering around inside the barrel. To fix this, I figured a swift kick was all the candy really needed, and if you translate swift kick into electromechanical speak, you get solenoid. These work by converting electricity into very fast linear motion via an electromagnet. By now firing the candy into the launch wheels, I'm hoping this extra momentum will overcome whatever friction was causing the candy to chatter around inside the barrel. I was of course dead wrong, and what I got instead was a noisemaker that could barely lob the candies more than a few inches. But that's when I realized I've been approaching this problem from the wrong angle, quite literally. What I really need is a larger point of contact between the launching wheels and the candy. And the easiest way to do that is by simply taking the orientation from horizontal to vertical. To vertical. So I redesigned the launch wheels to accommodate the taller dimensions, assembled a new test frame, and gave it another go. This time, I was able to get the wheels up to full speed and even launch a couple pieces of candy. However, it was short-lived because the treads then experienced rapid, unscheduled disassembly. Just like the rubber treads from my first test, the extreme speeds were ripping the material apart from the inside. And as an added bonus, the shredded TPU also decided to embed itself in the now pulverized candy, which caused some slight clogging of the barrel. After looking back through the footage, you can see the treads slowly expand outwards the faster the wheel spins, which eventually causes them to self-destruct. But how do you fix something like this without changing materials? The approach I took was to redesign the treads with these little interlocking tabs that slot into the inner wheel hub. These should help prevent the treads from expanding outwards by acting as small mechanical anchors, locking the tread to the wheel hub and keeping everything firmly in place. Plus, this design keeps the treads fully removable, so as they wear down over time, I can just replace them with a fresh set. The real test, though, is how do they perform at a few thousand RPM? Using my high-speed camera, I spun up the motors to the same speed that shredded my previous design, and sure enough, the new treads held steady with barely any outward expansion. Unlike my first test, it worked so well, I accidentally embedded one of the candies into my computer monitor, which was pretty cool. Though, having learned my lesson, I set up some protective cardboard to conduct further testing. To my delight, the candies weren't just getting launched, they were getting absolutely obliterated. Some of them even broke apart before hitting the cardboard, which meant instead of just slugs, I now had candy buckshot as well. This is perfect. We almost have cardboard piercing rounds. And even made a little, a little smiley face too. 
But the only problem is I've been using gravity to feed the little candies into the chamber and what I really need is a magazine. That's gonna make this whole process so much easier. To do that, I sadly had to decommission my poor Pez dispenser so I could extract the giant spring from inside. From there, I 3D printed a candy sized clip with a small follower for the spring to push against, allowing me to load up and eject the candies one by one. It also made for a great fidget toy. The hard part though was figuring out a way to make a reliable magazine quick release. And while my early prototypes were technically functional, they didn't really resemble the layout of a magazine release on a real pistol grip. So for the finished version, I redesigned everything to be a single button on the grip that pushes the catch in and out, releasing or securing the magazine. This victory was short-lived, however, because after assembling the new prototype and loading it up with some candy, I stumbled across a major problem. Despite having more than enough force to eject the candies, the tiny solenoid I was using didn't have a strong enough return spring to overcome the upward force of the follower. And since solenoids can only fire in one direction, that meant I had to manually pull the plunger back after each shot, which really defeats the whole purpose of having an electronic firing system. With the solenoid idea now dead in the water, I had to completely rethink the feeder mechanism, and I was really racking my brain to come up with a solution. <clears throat> I said I was racking. Right, right, a rack and pinion gear. Why didn't I think of that? Seen most commonly on car steering systems, a rack and pinion gear allows you to convert rotational motion into linear motion. By incorporating a rack gear into the candy pusher arm, I could now drive it both into and out of the magazine using a servo, which solved the problem of it getting stuck. Plus, with a bit of custom code, the position and fire rate of the launcher can all be set at the push of a button. And you know what that means. This candy launcher isn't just semi-automatic, it's also fully automatic. Finally, after months of failed prototypes, I now had a working magazine-fed Pez launcher. But I couldn't just stop there. After all, I am a professional prop builder, which means that this launcher isn't finished until it looks worthy of the big screen. After a bit of sketching and a lot of CAD modeling, it was ready. Featuring some of the most advanced food fight technology I've ever developed, the Pez Pistol Mark I would be my most ambitious launcher yet. With the model done, I sent everything off to my 3D printers and started focusing on the electronics. To control everything, I'm using the ESP32-S3 along with a custom circuit board I designed that should fit neatly inside the frame. To get the boards manufactured, I sent the design over to PCBWay. They offer a huge range of customization, which was perfect for this project since I wanted an all-black PCB with yellow silk screen for the finished version. If you want to get started making your own custom circuit boards, be sure to check out PCBWay.com or click the link in the description. With my custom PCBs finally here, it was time for one of my favorite parts, baking on all the surface mount components and watching the solder magically snap each part into place. By this point, the 3D printed parts were finishing up, which meant it was time to test my work and assemble the first full prototype. Using some metal tweezers to simulate pulling the trigger, I could now test the fully automatic firing mode. The real question though was how would it do with some actual candy? That wasn't supposed to happen. All right, hold on, I'll try it again. There we go. That was a pretty successful test. With everything confirmed working, I needed to now go through each of the roughly 30 different components and hand sand them one by one. As much as I hate sanding though, it is the only way to get a nice smooth finish that the primer and paint can then stick to. The only exception was the main motor mount, which I opted to have CNC machined out of aluminum for extra strength. Once the paint dried, I added a few custom cut decals and got to work scratching up my beautiful new paint job. As with all of my builds, I want this thing to look like it's been in service for years, which meant taking some of the shine off with my Dremel and a bit of sandpaper. With all the parts prepped and weathered, it was finally time to assemble everything. The hardest part by far was squeezing all the electronics into the cutout underneath the barrel. To keep all the wires hidden, I made a bunch of tunnels inside the parts that the wires could then run through. Even still, it was an extremely tight fit and it took several tries for everything to stay in place when I went to close up the frame. After connecting all the wires to my custom circuit board, it was time for the first test.
Fortunately, it was successful, which meant I could now attach the last few pieces to the frame, including the transparent OLED I would be using as the sight. And with that, the Pez pistol was finally complete. This thing's finally finished, which means it's time for some target practice. I didn't think that was gonna work. I've set up some targets roughly 15 feet away, so I'm just gonna put this thing on full auto and hose it down and see what happens. <laughs> All right, hold on, I have to reload. Last can, here we go. <laughs> this thing is so cool. <laughs> now you may be asking, but Davis, what about that major problem you said you would be facing? And to that I have only three words. Trick or treaters. Now, because I live in an apartment, that means I don't really get a lot of trick or treaters, which is kind of a shame because I love Halloween. So I figure, if the trick-or-treaters won't come to me, then the least I could do is bring the candy to them. And ideally, as fast as possible. Trick-or-treat! Now that I've determined this thing can handle some trick-or-treaters, it's time to collect some real data. So let's go back to the shop and see just how fast are these really getting fired. To actually test this, we're gonna do everything the old fashioned way. So I've made a timing chart here and the way this works is I'm gonna fire the candy across this backdrop and film it in slow motion. So using a little bit of math, I can then calculate the final speed based off of the camera's frame rate and the distance traveled. Now that you know how this works, let's get to the fun part, which is making some candy blow up. Holy smokes. Clocking in at a blistering 65 miles an hour, the candies didn't stand a chance, and apparently, neither did my reflexes. After enjoying a bit more candy-based carnage, I figured I'd test the condiment cannon as well, which ended up being no slouch at just shy of 25 miles an hour. It also made a huge mess. Even though I now had bits of candy strewn all over my workshop, I still felt like this project was missing something. The answer, of course, is a holster. Now I had something to hold my candy and the pistol, which was crucial because it allowed me to do one very specific thing. There's a story people tell about a man who lives out west. They say he's won every food fight he's ever been in, and that he only answers to one name. They call him the Snack Slinger. At last, the Food Fight collection is finally complete, and if you want to build your own Pez Pistol or Condiment Cannon, I've started a Patreon where you'll get exclusive first access to all the files I made for this project and many others. As you can imagine, it takes hundreds of hours to build out a project like this, so if you do choose to support me, know that I greatly appreciate it. And speaking of support, I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Throughout the course of this build, I had to use math, science, engineering, and more in order to pull it off. And if you're looking to grow your knowledge in any of those areas, Brilliant.org is the perfect place to do so. With thousands of easy to follow lessons on a variety of topics, Brilliant can help you get smarter every day so you can tackle whatever projects you put your mind to. Instead of just video lectures, Brilliant focuses on hands-on problem solving, which is proven to be up to six times more effective when it comes to retaining knowledge. Best of all, it's available on both mobile and desktop, which means you can take courses on everything from building circuits to computer programming either at home or on the go. Which means you can replace doom scrolling with learning. Try out everything Brilliant has to offer with a free 30-day trial. Plus, you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription by scanning the QR code, clicking the link in the description, or by visiting brilliant.org slash backhaulstudios. And on that note, thank you so much for watching and be sure to stay tuned for future builds.